Now I call the November 4th, 2018 Blue Spring City Council meeting to order. If you would stand with me, observe a moment of silence, and I will lead you in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. I want to welcome you in attendance as well as those that might watch the YouTube version later on. Next, we have the consent agenda. Unless there are items that need to be pulled, I accept a motion for approval. So moved. Second. Your second. Roll call, please. I'm sorry. Who made the second? I missed that. Kent. Kent. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Edmonds. Council Member Edmondson. Thank you. Council Member Kaler? Aye. Levison? Aye. Fowler? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Edmondson? Aye. Culpepper? Aye. Mayor Ross? Aye. Carried unanimously. Next, we have a public hearing on the Main Center Redevelopment Corporation tax abatement for Anthem's photography. Mayor, the city has the following exhibit to enter into the record. City Council information form dated October 21, 2019, including notice of public hearing, taxing jurisdictions, distribution list, tax impact analysis, certified mail receipts, MCRC abatement application, and bill number 4709 with abatement attachment agreement attached as Exhibit A. This is all we have to offer for the record. Thank you. Mr. Cole, on behalf of the city. Great. Uh, Mayor, members of the City Council, thank you for the time this evening. Uh, tonight we're hearing a public hearing as well as a proposed ordinance regarding the proposed tax abatement of real property for the renovation of a facility for Anthem Photography at 209 Northwest 11th Street. Uh, this was the, for, for those who have been around a bit, uh, this is the former All Right HVAC uh, building uh, on 11th Street here in downtown. Upon conclusion of the public hearing, a bill approving the, the, the project pursuant to the Main Center Redevelopment Corporation amended and restated development plan um, and, ab and abatement agreement uh, will be ready for introduction and readings. Uh, Anthem Photography submitted an initial application to receive MCRC tax abatement on August 19th, proposing the renovation and redevelopment of the property at 209 Northwest 11th Street, as well as uh, any an ancillary improvements that may be required. The bill will, will approve the proposed project and an abatement agreement between the MCRC and Anthem Photography, allowing the MCRC to initiate tax abatement for the company to receive tax abatement upon completion of the improvements to the building. While the city is not a party uh, to the abatement agreement, the city council uh, is responsible for approving that abatement agreement. Tax abatement for the project will be initiated for the project upon completion and will be limited to the following items. The maximum duration of the agreement will be 10 years at 100% tax abatement on the improved property with the exception of Central Jackson County Fire District remaining uh, ability to capture 75% of the taxes uh, that it would normally receive uh, years one through 10. And this is a law that came into effect on August 28th of 2018, allowing fire districts to do so. Tax abatement for the property will be terminated prior to the 10 year duration if the abatement receipt captured in that period of time uh, exceeds the 10 year time frame. And finally, a tax impact analysis was required to demonstrate the need for MCRC tax abatement as well as the impact of taxing jurisdictions. Uh, this has been published for at least 21 days. Uh, during that 21 day period, none of the taxing jurisdictions voiced any concern about the particular project. Um, Aside from that, uh, a number of exhibits have been submitted to you, the notice of public hearing ta the, to the taxing jurisdictions, tax impact analysis, mail receipts, and the abatement application. With that, we also have our outside legal counsel, uh, Sid Douglas, is, is here for any uh, questions pertaining to the tax impact analysis or legal matters. Also, Jamie Russell, the entrepreneur, uh, bringing this application forward is in the audience as well. Okay, are there any questions of Mr. Cole from the council? 
Your Honor, I just would yes. like to say that I I'm always am so excited when I see people coming forward, starting businesses, and investing in our community. So I'm I'm very happy that this is going forward. Anyone else? Okay, there are any questions from Sid, from the council? Yes or not? Well, would the applicant, Ms. Russell, would you like to add anything or has he said it all? I think he covered it. He said it all, he covered it. Well, we're gonna go to the public. Anyone know what it's like to speak in support of? Support of, opposition to, opposition to. We'll close this public hearing. Would anyone like to introduce? I will, Your Honor. Okay. First reading of bill number 4709, an ordinance approving the Anthem Photography Project under the amended and restated Main Center Redevelopment Plan and approving an abatement agreement for the project. Move the bill be approved on the first reading and proceed with the second. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Second reading of bill number 4709, an ordinance amend approving the Anthem Photography Project under the amended and restated Main Center Redevelopment Plan and approving an abatement agreement for the project. Move the bill be approved on the second final reading given the appropriate ordinance number. Is there a second? Second. second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Councilmember Levesay? Aye. Fowler? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Edmondson? Aye. Culpepper? Aye. Kaler? Aye. Mayor Ross? Aye. Carriage unanimously given ordinance number 4867. Next we have introduction of reading of bill 4710. I'll introduce your honor. Okay. First reading of bill number 4710, an ordinance amending section 600-090 of the Code of Ordinances, City of Blue Springs, Missouri, to reduce the buffer for liquor licenses in downtown Blue Springs, Missouri. Move the bill be approved on the first reading. Proceed with the second. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Both same sign. Second reading of bill number 4710, an ordinance amending section 600-090 of the Code of Ordinances, City of Blue Springs, Missouri, to reduce the buffer for liquor licenses in downtown Blue Springs, Missouri. Move the bill be approved on the second reading, given the appropriate ordinance number. Second. 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 Discussion? Roll call, please. Councilmember Fowler? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Edmondson? Aye. Culpepper? Aye. Kaler? Aye. Levesse? Aye. Mayor Ross? Aye. Carried unanimously, given ordinance number 4868. Next, we have introduction of reading to be a 4711. I'll introduce you, Honor. Okay. First reading of bill number 4711, an ordinance amending section 515650 of the Code of Ordinances, City of Blue Springs, Missouri, to reflect current cross-referenced code sections. Move the bill be approved on the first reading and proceed with the second. There a second. Second. Discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Same sign. Second reading of bill number 4711, an ordinance amending section 515650 of the Code of Ordinances, City of Blue Springs, Missouri, to reflect current cross-referenced code sections. Move the bill be approved on the second reading and proceed with, and uh, given the appropriate ordinance number. <laughs> second. 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 Discussion? Roll call, please. Councilmember Erickson? Aye. Edmondson? Aye. Culpepper? Aye. Kaler? Aye. Levesse? Aye. Fowler? Aye. Mayor Ross? Aye. Carriage unanimously given ordinance number 4869. Next we have an introduction reading of bill 4712. I'll introduce your honor. Okay. First reading of bill number <coughs> 4712, an ordinance accepting the conveyance of a sidewalk easement from Hy-Vee. Inc. Move the, the bill be approved on the first reading. Proceed with the second. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Same sign. Second read of, of bill number 4712, an ordinance accepting the conveyance of a sidewalk easement from Hy-Vee, Inc. Move the bill be approved on the second reading and give the appropriate ordinance number. There a second. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Councilmember Edmondson? Aye. Culpepper? Aye. Kaler? Aye. Levesse? Aye. Fowler? Aye. Erickson? Aye. Mayor Ross? Aye. Carried unanimously, given ordinance number 4870. Well, it brings the mayoral announcements. I have a few. I was thrilled to be able to meet the bus at Blue Spring South on Saturday to welcome home the Blue Spring South Lady Jaguar softball team with a repeat of the state championship. Mm -hmm. So kudos to Blue Springs South Lady Jaguars. Yes, give them a round of applause. <laughs> and for those that didn't see, I did a posting on Facebook this morning that today would have been my mother's 113th birthday, but I lost her 37 years ago. But it's kind of ironic because my Aunt Ivory she lived to be 113, and I lost her in 2012. So 113 is kind of sticking out there for me today. The next thing is, is this Friday morning, beginning at 6.15 in the morning, for you breakfast eaters, 
is the Mayor's Community Prayer Breakfast at Adams Mark, I mean Adams Point Conference Center, and it is sold out. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be an exciting day. We're going to be recognizing some uh, group of people that I think you all know Friday morning. Remain nameless right now who that'll be, <laughs> Chief. Um, <laughs> And the other thing is, is our keynote speaker this year is Dayton, what's his last name? Moore. Moore. What? Moore. Moore. Is, is he the general manager of the Royals? Yep. Yes, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, Day Dayton Moore is going to be the keynote speaker for this, so it should be an exciting morning. And I know the school district does a great job every year uh, with... Uh, doing taps and the choir singing and they just really have a great presence at that community prayer breakfast so if you don't have your tickets it's probably a little late right now unless you can find somebody that will have an opening to let you in thoughts to ponder i found this one on facebook and i didn't see an arthur but i liked it so that's why i'm going to share it with you tonight and i quote sometimes you have to stay silent because no words can explain what is going on in your mind and heart, end quote. That brings us to visitors, and I have some visitors' appearance forms. And the first one that came up here to me today, has been sitting in the audience for a little while, is David Mann. David, why don't you come on up and tell us a little bit about what you're interested in. Look like solar regulations. And I think everybody knows David. East 40 Brewery. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, good evening. Um, yeah, so, folks, you know me as the East 40 guy. All right. All right. Yep. You're good. Uh, but I'm also a resident of Blue Springs. And also, I have worked in the solar industry for the past five years. Uh, my wife has worked in the solar industry for the past eight years, uh, so you could say that I know a little bit about solar energy. Um, came to my attention recently uh, the bill that was passed at the July 1st council meeting regarding solar. Um, unfortunately, I didn't know about it ahead of time or I would have tried to be here at that meeting to provide some insight. Um, but I was able to watch the meeting and I'm here now. Uh, I've reached out to uh, each of the council members and the mayor individually uh, via email, and I've spoken with a couple of you personally, uh, but just here to formally uh, express my opinion on that bill and hopefully ask for reconsideration of some of the language in that bill. Um, so the bill as it was originally uh, written and as it passed the planning commission and came to the council I think was uh, written well um, and I think achieved the goal that was written in the preamble, the whereas clause, where it says the city desires to make renewable energy resources such as solar installations more accessible and financially feasible for residents and businesses in the city. Um, however, at the July 1st meeting some amendments were proposed, one of them was passed and was included in the ultimate bill that included language that roof mounted solar panels shall not be allowed on the primary street facing roof plane. And that statement I think effectively took this bill from helping Blue Springs be more in favor of solar energy to doing the exact opposite and making it um, in fact one of the most restrictive cities in the Kansas City area and on par with the most restrictive cities in the nation when it comes to solar energy. Um, the reason that no other cities include language like this is because, um, you know, when it comes to uh, looking at a roof, you know, when a solar ins installer comes in and examines your roof, uh, you know, they want to match uh, the amount of solar energy that you produce with the amount of energy that you use in your household or your business and each roof only has so much potential and there's other factors that uh, take away from that potential such as shading from trees or other buildings uh, you know accessory chimneys vents all that stuff that's on your roof um, 
And so I know when there was discussion at the July 1st meeting that um, it maybe wasn't fully understood the implications of this statement and wasn't necessarily fully understood uh, how solar works and you know there was some discussion about the direction that it can face and you know why can't you just put solar on the other roof planes uh, which is fine like a lot of times uh, you'll try to maximize your roof uh, to the fullest extent possible because you only have so much real estate and if you want to offset all of your energy you need to use every available uh, area on your roof and so south facing is going to be your most productive direction and then anywhere else from east to west uh, will still produce pretty well at certain times of the day but as soon as you start facing north um, you know you can produce some energy especially during the summer when the sun's more overhead but in the winter it's not going to be very productive at all and so um, you know a lot of times you'll see people first fill out the south facing planes and then go to the east to the west and then if they really want to you know tack on a few more panels maybe they will go on the north but you can't just cut out the south facing plane or the east or the west and expect to still have a financially feasible installation and so what i'm asking of the council is to reconsider this bill and reconsider uh, taking out the statement from section 405.060.a subsection 7f that states roof mounted solar panels shall not be allowed on the primary street facing roof plane and i would like to offer myself as a resource for any questions that you guys have and um, i'd like to be here at any future meetings where this is discussed and voted upon if you guys have any questions then uh, i can bring additional resources if necessary i have plenty of industry contacts of experts with knowledge beyond my own um, and that I'll give it back to you if you guys have any questions this evening but David I if, if I recall during that discussion one of the reasons the restriction went on on main streets were from an aesthetic standpoint not necessarily from uh, maximizing your solar usage is the look of seeing that and, and there's some examples around town that is certainly not aesthetically pleasing. And I would imagine also some homeowners association probably would not permit it as well. That's correct. And I think that the, the homeowners association's rules supersede the city's anyway. And so I think for the city to make such a restrictive statement, um, you know, where it's not gonna be allowable anywhere in the city, uh, like I said, goes beyond what any other city is doing uh, HOAs, if they desire, they can have that language and they can restrict homeowners in their neighborhoods from doing so. Um, you know, and that'll hold up as long as till those residents, you know, make a fuss and try to get those rules changed. Um, but, you know, I think that aesthetics can't prevent us as a city from allowing people to choose renewable energy and to choose to generate their own energy and save money from buying it from the grid and save the environment for ourselves, for our children. And so. Uh, if anybody else have Mayor, any comments? If, you, if I could. Yes. Um, as the majority of this council probably remembers, and uh, I did speak out basically against us not doing this but but going forward and allowing the, the solar on all sides of the of, of the rooftop and i made that comment back then and david kind of alluded to that that by doing what we did we basically eliminated half or 50 percent or greater of the houses in blue springs to be able to have solar and i i would love to readdress this to come back look at it again and maybe bring it back before the council if it's uh if the council so moved to do that I think that point is um, especially true. At least half of households are probably prevented from doing solar at all by this statement. And the half that are left are gonna be in a lesser financial position by their investment in solar because they have to move it to a different plane, which is gonna produce less energy, or just have a smaller system, which is gonna produce less energy, or not do it at all which they're still buying energy from the grid. All of those options means a greater expense to that person. 
I, I think we do bring it back. We also need to further uh, explore for those that are not in homeowners associations that are governed by homeowners associations, which can put some restrictions on what you yeah. do or can't do, is what effect does that have on your neighbor's property value uh, if they want to sell the house and your next door neighbor has got a bunch of these solar panels facing the street? I mean, I think those are things you have to take into consideration. From my personal standpoint, mm -hmm. I would want to know that. Yeah, and I know that the research will show you that at least the house that solar panels are on, the homes, home values are increased by at least thirty thousand dollars in this area and fifty thousand dollars. You in mean other the neighbor areas. that does not have the panel property value is going to go up if my neighbor next door does have those panels? I, I mean that's the point. Couldn't I'm imagine that. Is, is if my neighbor's got it, I don't want my property value to be affected by my next door neighbor having solar panels on their house. Well, I think when you have one installation in the neighborhood. You may see it as a sore thumb, but as it becomes the norm, everybody's going to have solar, and you know it's just kind of second nature. And you know, not everybody finds it aesthetically displeasing. And maybe maybe staff can work something into the language that means. Again, I think that's a real concern for me. I don't know about the rest of you. Your Honor, yes, if I may, um, not to be too controversial, but. When we throw out the numbers that we eliminate 50% of the homes, that's I get that because that's assuming everybody's south and north, but we do have other, other areas like we have east and we have southeast, we have southwest. That's a good sales pitch for that. The other thing is um, the companies that put these in, they like, you said, I think your words were something to the effect that they like to match your use with what they think they could get out of it and they finance accordingly. Uh, I don't think personally that, that I've read where there is an issue with not doing 100% of your use with solar. So in other words, someone may be able to get 100% of what they use out of their solar panels, but for whatever reason, whether it's city ordinance or whether it's a mountain or whatever it may be, they may be able to get 50% of what they use and they're still saving money they're still taking money, uh, taking, excuse me, they're still taking energy off the grid, if you will, but they're going to be putting it back. That's, that's another issue as well. And to your point, there are cities in Missouri, I wasn't prepared to, I've got a list of these at home, I was not prepared for that, but there are several cities in Missouri, I believe Lee was one of them, there's a um, O'Fallon, Missouri, I believe, I'm talking off the top of my head, that does restrict those. Uh, there are also, and I think most of the council has heard me talk about this, and you and I chatted about this, there are some really cool ordinances out there um, in the states or statutes. California's got a great one. Uh, was it New Hampshire I sent to you the other day? New Hampshire has another one. So um, from a personal standpoint, I'm excited about it. I'd like to make this a leading on the lead, the Blue Springs on the leading edge of solar energy, but I don't think the solution is just to put them on street fronts. I think there are modifications and other changes that we can do. Uh, a screening issue that we talked about before, which was part of the ordinance, part of the reason it was because we were, we didn't have the allowance for accessory uses, et cetera. And I have not seen this, but I've been told that one of the major field applications of solar energy by Brittany Hill middle school has since been screened with a privacy fence. Uh, I don't know, I have not seen it, but I've been told that by my wife. Uh, some of those things were not in the ordinance as well. So your, your point with me is very, very, very well taken. I, I think we have an opportunity to step forward in all kinds of different ways. I think what we'll do is, David, we'll take what you said on advisement, and if the uh, member of the council wanna work with the staff, and certainly use your counsel uh, to be able to come back and present something to see if the council is willing to support it, yeah, it would be appropriate. Mm -hmm. so, I appreciate anyway, that. Anyway, staff and whoever that might want to work on that certainly have the opportunity to do that. All right, thanks, thanks David. Thank you. For coming, you betcha. Miss Cindy, do you still want to talk? I did not think you I didn't think you'd want to talk, but <laughs> we already got that done. <laughs> uh, I guess that's it. I don't have anything. No. Oh, Russ. Yep. Why don't you come on up? I'll still talk. 
<laughs> uh, my name is Russ Crone. I live at 4600 Southwest Hickory Lane. Um, I would like to say to the mayor, the council, staff, public works, thank you so much for repaving Southwest uh, Bowling Road. I'm not a computer gamer, so I guess my games in life are real life, and I kind of miss dodging the potholes coming in. It's awesome what you all did, so thank you very much. Well, thanks, Russ. You know, we uh, we appreciate you coming uh, telling us that, because a lot of times you don't get a lot of accurate. Well, we appreciate not getting the phone calls. <laughs> you're a gamer, right? <laughs> no, but that's my history. Oh, it's your history, yeah. All right. Any, well, I don't have any other business appearance forms. Is there anything else to come before the council for? I accept a motion for to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor, aye. Aye. All right. Both same sign. We adjourn. Good job.